so due to a lot of technical issues, aka Apple would not let me update my iMovie, and of course I'm basic and don't know how to use anything else, so I have not been able to post in a while, and that was really sad because I actually had a really, 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 really good, like, episode, if you want to call that, these episodes, all about the Haunted Mansion and the history behind it, as well as some things I learned in a backstage uh, cast member only tour I was able to uh, attend. So I'll probably be remaking that one. Um, but anyway, just a couple of things. I no longer work at Animal Kingdom Lodge, as I am now full-time with the Walt Disney Company, which was the original plan. Uh, so I have moved, though. I am out of CP housing. I have a very uh, nice little, little townhouse. It's very cute. I have three roommates. Um, and so we're just, we pretty much all are working either for Disney or for Universal, trying to be adults. <laughs> And it's a little difficult at times, but you know, we're doing it. Um, and none of us are natively from Florida, so that's also great. Uh, anyway, now I do work in Magic Kingdom itself, which is something I told myself junior year of high school that I was going to do. So I actually am doing the thing that I said I was going to. So I am working Tomorrowland attractions, specifically at the Tomorrowland Speedway. And I think I'm going to do a video about that later but today since I don't believe I ever made a video about hotels and that's like what I went to school for and what I love doing um, I'm gonna talk about hotels and then specifically a little bit later on talk about Animal Kingdom Lodge and what great opportunity it was working there first things first when you go into a hotel please make sure you have everything you need I can't tell you how many times not just at Animal Kingdom Lodge, but mostly when I worked at uh, the Hampton Inn down by my house, where people didn't have their ID on them. I need to see an ID. You can tell me that you're John Smith, but that means literally nothing to me. I need to have an ID. As well as make sure the person that you are traveling with, if you are not the main primary person, Make sure that person put your name on the reservation somewhere because otherwise I cannot check you in. Depending on where you're going and what their policies are, make sure that you also have a credit card. There are locations that are going to require you to have a credit card. Hampton Inn, we were sort of going towards that. We still did cash sometimes, but we really wanted to have either a credit card or debit card on file. And that's just because of incidentals. If nothing happens to your room and everything's fine, then you don't have to worry about it. When you come up to the guest and you're greeted either by what I would say either at the Hampton, which is like, hello, welcome, are you checking in? Or maybe at Animal Kingdom Lodge, Dumella, welcome home, how can I assist you today? Make sure that you're not just saying your name or throwing an ID at me. Because I'm taking the time to greet you, and granted, yes, that's part of my job, but I'm taking the time to greet you. Go ahead and you can just say hi back, or you don't, you don't have to say hi, how are you? You can just say, oh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm checking in. When you're checking in, the person checking in is going to go ahead and confirm everything. They're going to confirm the dates. So however many nights you're staying with us, they're going to confirm what you booked, whether it was a certain type of view, standard pool or savanna in the case of Animal Kingdom Lodge, or uh, as well as what type of bedding you will get. Now, normal hotels do guarantee you what type of bedding it is by the booking. So when you book a king, you're going to get a king or a queen or two queens or whatever, what have you. Animal Kingdom was a little bit different because we could not guarantee the type of bedding. We could guarantee the type of view. So you, if you booked a standard view, you'd have a standard view of a savanna, you'd have a savanna view, pool, so on and so forth. But if, you, if that was the only thing you booked, it, we could not guarantee it was gonna be two queens, a king, bunk beds, and a queen. It all more depended on we were blocking the hotel 
like how many people are in your room we kind of look and see if we can see ages like if there's three kiddos and like two adults in a standard view and like one of the kids is definitely going to be in like a pack and play or a crib then maybe we would try and put you into a queen with a bunk bed but again that was never a guarantee although i think we're getting rid of the bunk beds if i remember correctly anyway they're under remodeling so Anyway, just keep that in mind. You get what you pay for. When it comes to upgrades, those are great if they're available. I had them a lot at the Hampton during downtimes, and you know, I could definitely upgrade a diamond or a gold status member, or you know, someone I just really liked. I was like, they were real sweet to me, and I had like 10 kings, and they really wanted a king. I'd be like, okay, there you go. Uh, Animal Kingdom is a little bit different because it's on Disney property, so Disney being as popular as it is especially with the fact that we're seeing less and less downtime it's almost always like it was difficult for animal kingdom lodge to be like under 95 percent. i was always like what happened <laughs> if ever i saw we were under 95 i'd be like what's going on why do we not have people um so keep that in mind especially when you're picking a certain location to book what you can and be, and be okay with that booking. If when you booked, all there was was a standard view, then I'm sorry, that's probably what you're gonna get. Um, we can always look to see if there's an upgrade available. Don't be afraid to ask, but be aware that that upgrade is not a guarantee. And you requesting a king bed, also not a guarantee. A request does not equal a guarantee and that's something that really I want to hit home because I don't want you banking your entire vacation on one thing um, I know that it's not always the best like when you're like oh well maybe we'll get a magical upgrade and again that's great when we can do it but if we cannot do it I want you guys to still be able to go and enjoy yourselves, which you still can do at Animal Kingdom, whether it's in a standard view or a pool view or a savanna view. Third party booking. Most hotel people will tell you they are not a fan of third party booking because it doesn't always tell you the correct information as well as not always being all that much cheaper. When I worked at Hampton, it maybe was 10 to 20 bucks cheaper than the room, which is fine. Like, at places like that, it's really hard for them to screw up. But for Animal Kingdom Lodge, I would have a lot of people, especially from the UK, who they would be told from their standard view they could see animals, which is just not the case. Party booking really gets you where it does not tell you everything or it doesn't tell you the correct things and it wouldn't tell them that it wasn't a guarantee or anything like that or if it they did it was in like very 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 small print so just make sure that you are reading the small print as well of okay this is the type of room i want okay it says it's a it's not a guarantee again just keeping that not a guarantee in mind and just be wary of third party booking we had quite a few where the company didn't contact us and this was at Priceline and this was at Hampton where I had someone who the company didn't contact us to make the reservation and we were sold out so the guest had this reservation but the, it was never booked with us so we had to get in touch with Priceline and Priceline makes it extremely hard to talk to a person <sighs> if you want to hear all my thoughts on Priceline just let me know when it comes to checking in and checking out other hotels, you normally cannot check in until that room is ready. So that check-in time, if it says check in at three, don't be coming in at noon expecting a room. Disney's a little bit, a little bit better because even if the room is not ready, which I can guarantee you it's not going to be until that guaranteed time because think about all the turnover we have plus how many housekeepers we have. We have to keep things going and sometimes we're short staffed. Sometimes people want late checkouts. So when you are asking for a late checkout or an early check-in, keep in mind what that's doing to other guests as well as the housekeeping staff. Just, just keep that in mind, okay? Checking in at nine in the morning is not gonna happen on Disney property. Unless you are really lucky 
or you booked the night prior as well. So if you are traveling and you know for a fact that you are gonna get in at 7 a.m. and you want some place that you can shower and you wanna put all your stuff down, it's gonna be expensive, but go ahead and book it the night for the night before you arrive because then that way you know you have some place that you can unwind. And that goes for any hotel. I've had people do it at Hampton I've, where they will call us and say, hey, go ahead, check us in. We're coming in early the next morning. We put notes in the reservation so then that way our overnight person knows what's happening and no one's caught off guard because we're not, we're not gonna get rid of your room. When you check in at a Disney resort, we have this fun little thing where we can still actually check you in. We can do everything. We can put, we can get your magic bands all set up. We can put a credit card on file. We can actually physically check you in. The only thing is that the room just won't be ready yet. That's it. So, and your room is not going anywhere. I promise you that room is not going anywhere. We're not gonna give your room away. There's no reason for us to do that to you. So when you come in at seven in the morning and let's say you guys are all, you're ready to go, you know, you just wanna go to the parks, that's great. Drop your stuff off with either bell services or luggage depending on what location you're at. They might have luggage at like All Stars, Pop, and uh, Art of Animation. Bell services are gonna be more at the deluxe locations, but they can hold on to your luggage for you. And you can get it to it at any time. Anytime. It doesn't have to be where it goes in the room and you don't see it till your room is ready. You can get to it at any time and as much as you want. We're not gonna say, oh, you've already been in here five times. No, 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 if you need stuff, go ahead and get it. We're not gonna stop you from doing that. But go ahead, drop your luggage off and go out into the parks and have fun and we will text you or email you if you give us a good number or email when that room is ready. Because we're gonna let housekeeping know that you're there. We're gonna get all your information. That way your vacation doesn't have to stop as soon as you get here. You can just go, which I think is really awesome. And mom and I take advantage of that all the time. Like when she would come and visit, you know, she dropped off her stuff or, but when her and I would come and visit, back before I worked for the company, we would drop our stuff off, go into the parks because we left early in the morning, like red eye flights so that we could have as much time as we could. So that's everything having to do with just kind of hotels in general. I know I got more specific about Disney, but a lot of other hotels, at least where I worked at the Hampton, we did hold on to luggage depending on the situation. We didn't have a lot of room, but you know, if there was a family that came in at 11 o'clock and they had a lot of stuff, you know, and they didn't want to lug it around, that's fine. They'd put it on a luggage cart, we'd hold on to it and that way they could go and see the arch or anything like that so that their day didn't stop. So that's not just a Disney thing. But now we are going to talk about specifically Animal Kingdom Lodge and why I loved it so much and why I think it is one of the most unique locations ever. So Animal Kingdom Lodge actually has one of the largest permanent collections of African art outside of Africa. So everything you see in the lobbies or in the hallways that has like a little plaque next to it actually is an artifact, which I think is really, really awesome. There's this giant like yellow, like hut looking thing. Um, I'm not gonna spoil as to what it actually is because I want you guys to go visit it and read about it. And then you can tell me, you can be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. We also have the largest collection of South African wine outside of South Africa. Now that is gonna be located at Jico, which is at the Animal Kingdom Lodge Jombo House. There are two locations, there's Jombo House and Kadani Village. They are connected though, so you don't have to like freak out if you go to one versus the other. We do have a shuttle that goes in between the two. Or it's about a 10 minute walk, it's really not that bad. Of course, we got our namesake for the animals because we are in fact a certified zoo. Now that's pretty awesome. Keep in mind that the animals are free roaming. They do get to roam around in the savannah 22 hours of the day as it is their home. They are allowed to come into the barn area about two hours of the day. However, we don't force them to do so because I mean, if they wanna be outside, they can be outside. The only time that that does not occur is weather. So, if the weather, for example, is too cold for our giraffes and zebras, which does sometimes happen here in Florida, then they do come inside. 
because they're just they're not used to that sort of climate it's not what they were built for so we do go ahead and bring them inside however there are still lots of animals that hang out in the savannah during that time if you have a savanna view that's great fantastic if you don't if for whatever reason you booked a standard and unfortunately they didn't have any savanna upgrades and you get put in one of those parking lot views don't freak out. <laughs> there are lots of great places where you can see these animals. Um, ask any of the cast members and they can tell you their own personal favorite location. Mine, for example, is over at the Kidani Village Lobby. They have these big windows, which they have at Jumbo House as well. However, it is the Sunset Savannah. It is the largest savannah. But my favorite spot is the porches because they have just little rocking chairs and you can sit there and a lot of the time there you can see a giraffe a zebra and a wildebeest and some other creatures as well all at once like i i remember i was at the savannah overlook which there are four of those since we have four savannas um well i guess we have five because i think there's two sunsets yeah we have a lot of overlooks and i saw a zebra taking a dust bath on one of those overlooks and that was not from my room that was, that was from the lobby. <laughs> um, so we've created all these places where you can go and you can see the animals, if not in your room, in the common areas. Also down the hallways of Jumbo House, if you go down to where the elevators are, there are large sort of seating areas and they're just little porches that are well shaded. I always used to tell this to my guests that no one really knows about and they've got like little tables and rocking chairs and it's just kind of a nice sort of peaceful place to hang out but because the the hotel has such big windows everywhere you go you almost you, I get distracted all the time and I see an animal you know um, that being said if you have a savanna view and you get to your room and you wait 10 minutes and you don't see an animal just be patient man when you're at the zoo and you go to like I would always go to the big cats because <laughs> love me some cats. But you don't see one, you don't just go, oh, they're not here, and then you walk away. You wait. You're, if you're patient, they come out. Same thing kind of goes for our animals, where, again, they are free roaming. They go where they want to go. We're not going to force them to stay in one spot. We switch up their eating locations, that way they don't get used to a certain location. They're not, like, you know, stalking it. So you just have to be patient, especially if it's nighttime. If you check in at 8.30 during the winter and it's dark and you can't see animals. Wait till the morning. Mm -hmm. just, just wait. <laughs> uh, I can't tell you, there, there were rooms where I would be dropping things off because I was a runner and so I was dropping off either like, you know, um, packages or anything like that and there'd be a giraffe not 10 feet away from the window and of course the guests weren't there they were out in the parks which you should go out into the parks as well but if you're just patient you can see some really cool animals and if you're at Kidani Village and let's say you get the Pembe Savannah instead of the Sunset Savannah which Pembe doesn't have giraffes but but it does have a copy and Okapi are really freaking cute. They're like a mix of giraffes with zebras, and that is the only savanna that we have Okapi in. And we actually have a baby Okapi, I think his name is Desi. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. But he was born October 1st, right around the same time that we had a baby giraffe who was born. And he is just the cutest thing. The cutest thing, he's got huge ears. Love it. So the Okapi are just beautiful and I love them. And they have the Red River Hogs in Pembe, which we don't have in the other savannas. So just keep in mind that some of the savannas are more unique than other ones. So there's not really a bad savanna. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to get off my high horse about, about the uh, animals there. One of the other like cool sort of cultural things is the roofing. The roofing in both uh, locations, Kadani and Jumbo House, are like thatched 
not like real thatch, but like on the inside, some of it actually is real. And we do have an expert who comes and they'll check it to make sure everything is up to, you know, up to standards and everything like that. But if you ever just like look up at the ceiling of either one of those, it's so cool. It's just, cause it's just, it's so high vaulted and man, I just love Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's so pretty. <laughs> so the only location that you can get zebra domes is at Animal Kingdom Lodge. They take three days to make because they have to do like one layer and freeze it, one layer and freeze it, one layer and freeze it. So they do take three days to make. Um, I'm not really sure how to describe them. They are just really good. <laughs> um, oh, hi, baby. Yeah, hi, boop. But, so that's another like unique thing to Animal Kingdom Lodge. You cannot get them at the parks only Animal Kingdom Lodge. Got it? Got it. One of the critiques of Animal Kingdom Lodge is actually its hallways because yes they are long. I have had to run those hallways up and down, up and down all day long, but they're air conditioned and inside. If you were staying at honestly any other resort, it's all gonna be outside and way far away from the lobby, I can tell you that. There are resorts where you have buildings, buildings, and you are far away from the lobby. So being inside with air conditioning is not half bad. Because I can tell you Coronado Springs, vast majority of those buildings you have to get to outside. Art of Animation, outside. Pop Century, outside. All Stars, outside. See where I'm going with this. It's indoors and it's air conditioned. <laughs> so Animal Kingdom Lodge does have lots of fun activities for kids as all hotels do. They mostly hang out down by the pool or in our community hall or Simba's clubhouse. Now we did change the rules on Simba's clubhouse where you do have to be 12 years or older to be by yourself. I believe it's 12, don't quote me on that. But we do have lots of fun activities depending on the time of year. So like around Christmas time, we did actually have making your own ornaments using dyed ostrich shells. Uh, around Easter, we had paint your own ostrich egg. So we do have like some, some crafts that are gonna be a little bit more geared towards um, Africa. Of course, we had like tie dye, things like that, or we would have pool parties, we'd have nightly movies. So there's lots of fun things to do. If you just wanna take a day and hang out at the hotel itself, there are lots of fun things. There's also lots of things that maybe require a little bit of extra money. And for example, one of those is our highly popular uh, safaris. So we do have a couple of safaris you can do. One of them does take place at night called the Starlight Safari. You get to go out into the savanna with uh, high grade night vision goggles and you get to see the animals, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we do have like eating with a uh, animal trainer or caretaker. Um, we have a wine tasting event down at Jico. We have, they have like a, a culture, a food cultural tour uh, every day down, I think also down by Jico. Certain days of the month we do have what we would call, what would we call it? Shoot. You would paint and you would get like one drink. And it was like one of those cool painting classes things. It's gonna bug me that I don't remember the name of it, but it's really fun. <laughs> I never got to do it, but I always wanted to. Maybe I'll make time and do that and just go visit. But you would like sit out on one of the porch areas in the Jumbo House lobby and you would paint uh, like an African scene. So like usually like a sunset with maybe a silhouette of a giraffe or a tree, um, which was just kind of cool. Thing I have for right now. Uh, like I said, I'll probably end up making another video specifically about the dining plan as well as specifically about Speedway. I am going to recreate my Haunted Mansion one. However, I think I'm going to do it a little differently than I originally did it, which is I'm going to make it into two parts instead of just one big thing. I'm living the dream. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but um, oh, and I'll get back to Hidden Magic as well because I missed, I missed doing those. They really kind of helped me 
process things. I don't know. Not like anybody really watches these anyway, but I think they're fun. All right, guys. Bye. See you later. <laughs>